Hello and welcome back to the channel on our continuing voyage to become better guitar players. My name's Mark and in this video I want to answer the question that I'm getting asked all the time which is how hard is it to learn to play guitar? So I'm asked this by friends, by family, by people who've got a kid who wants to learn, maybe somebody's come up to retirement and they've got the, they want to fulfill their you know lifelong rock star ambitions or something and I'm always getting asked how hard is it to learn to get to play guitar? And how do you even begin to answer that? I mean, what do you say? Well, it's harder than learning to drive, but not as hard as getting a PhD in law. I mean, is that a fair answer? I don't know. How do you judge this? How can you qualify how hard it is? Uh, what's our unit of measurement here? I, I don't know. So I thought what I'd do is I'll put a video together and we'll talk about some of the struggles and difficulties and challenges of learning this wonderful, complex, challenging, fulfilling instrument. Okay, so the first thing that all beginners struggle with is the sore fingers. We've all gone through this, we all get it. Um, every beginner probably thinks that they're unique and that their fingers hurt more than everybody else. It's not true, we all go through it. Um, I get questions like, you know, will my fingers always hurt? You know, does it ever get easier? How can Jimi Hendrix play if his fingers hurt like that? All of those kind of questions. So the simple fact is your fingers will develop um, calluses, hard skin on the end of the on the end of the fingers, and it will become easier. It will stop hurting. It doesn't hurt now when I play guitar, and that's because I have this hard skin on the end. Now, how long it takes to build that up? Well, it kind of depends. I think for me it was about probably a couple of weeks. Now, here's the killer with this because what happens is the first time you get a guitar and you start playing, you might play like 20 minutes and, and just kind of like, you know, really learn your first chords. And do that, maybe you get 20 minutes out of it and at the end of it you think, oh, my fingers are so sore. And you come back the next day, you do the same thing, you put your fingers down, you, you play again. But this time, after two minutes, your fingers are sore. And why is that? It's because they haven't recovered from the previous day. And we all go through that stage. And it's really tricky because if you leave it long enough that your fingers completely heal from it, then it's like starting all over again. You never quite build up those calluses. But if you play constantly all the time, then um, it just hurts all the time because your fingers never get time to recover. For me, I think it was a case of just playing little and often. Um, and as I say, it probably took a couple of weeks, um, but it just it just happened. Uh, sooner or later, it just you, you get those. Uh, it becomes easier, and it's just one of those things. We all go through it. You just have to get through it. Um, there's kind of there's no simple answer for it. Just play little and often. Um, now you could try doing something like playing a nylon string guitar, which is slightly easier on the fingers, not entirely, but it's slightly easier. But um, for the case, you know, for, for the point of just a couple of weeks, save it, save, making it marginally easier for just a couple of weeks, it's not really worth getting a hold of the guitar. Best thing to do is just get through it and know that we've all got there and we've all, we've all had to do it. So kind of following on from that, another kind of thing that I hear occasionally is that, you know, I've got the wrong fingers. My fingers are too long. My fingers are too short. My fingers can't stretch that far. My fingers will never be able to move that fast. I can't do that. Those kind of things, again, we all go through that. We all have our brain tell us crazy stuff like that. The truth is, it doesn't matter. You, your fingers are gonna be fine. If we think of like extreme examples, you've got the likes of Django Reinhardt, who damaged two of his fingers in, I think it was a, a caravan fire or something, lost the use of two fingers, but was still able to rip up and down the neck just using the two good fingers. Think of Tony Iommi from um, Black Sabbath, who in an industrial accident lost the tips, the ends of, of his uh, ring and middle finger, and then reportedly had to kind of make some homemade prosthetic out of melting down a washing up liquid bottle or something. I don't know. But there's two phenomenal players who don't even have the right number of fingers. So don't worry about your fingers. Don't worry about the shape of them or anything. And the reason I can say that is because the majority of guitar playing, at least 90% of guitar playing, is muscle memory. And you start with no muscle memory and you build it up and it gets easier. Now, what is muscle memory? What does that look like on guitar? Well, I, I, the, for me, the best illustration of muscle memory is when I think back to when I was learning to drive. And I was learning to drive and you needed to turn a corner. 
and what I'd have to do is I'd have to think, okay, um, mirror, okay, I, I, everything's clear, I can turn, uh, press the signal down, okay, I've done that, S uh, slow my position in the road, start to slow down, get my correct position, okay, now I'm getting ready to turn, check the mirror again, okay, now I need to put the clutch down, clutch is all the way down, now I need to put it into gear, now I need to turn the wheel, now I need to straighten up, now I need to give bring the clutch up slightly, now I need to give it a bit more gas, check the mirror again, and, and you go through all of this, and just turning the corner is, is about 10 or 15 different individual movements, and every one of them has to be considered individually. And so each, each movement is, is jerky and stiff, and you're having to think, and you're panicking, and all those things. And then after you've been driving, after I've had several driving lessons, you get to the point where you just think, well, turn in the corner, it's just mirror, signal, Manoeuvre and your your arms and your hands and everything your feet all just move in sync because they know what to do because you built up that muscle memory and then sooner or later get to a point where you're driving and you don't even think mirror signal maneuver you just think turn left and everything just happens automatically because you've got that muscle memory and it's the same when we're learning to play guitar at first we might think right I'm going to play a G chord and you have to put down one finger at a time and then you have to strum and then you might strum again. And then you think, oh, now I've got to play a D chord. And so you think one finger at a time. And you think, how can we possibly play guitar when I have to do all that? I have to move each individual finger. But just like learning to drive, sooner or later you just think G chord. Or D chord or C, or whatever it is. And because you just think the chord, your fingers know how to form that shape and they just do it automatically. Same as like learning to drive. So don't worry about it. That's what muscle memory is. It's just practicing enough that your fingers just know how to automatically uh, do stuff. Um, so, and it's the same whether we're playing a scale. So we might, you know, spend time learning to play a scale, play it enough, practice enough. Sooner or later, you just play the scale. Okay, am I thinking about all the individual notes? No, my fingers just know where to move when I just see the whole scale on the fretboard and my fingers have practiced that enough to just be able to move. That's what muscle memory is. And that only comes through practice. It only comes through getting the fingers on the fretboard, which brings me on to the next topic. So people often ask about, well, what's the best way to learn to, get, to play guitar? And if you think about it these days, we've got YouTube videos, we've got, um, specialist uh, apps on your phone where you can, you can get a guitar teacher, there's books, DVDs, there's that funny bouncy ball game that they keep advertising us. There's um, all these different things, specialist online courses. There's lots and lots of different um, materials and things available to learn to play guitar. Completely different from when I was learning to play guitar when practically none of that stuff existed or Things like VHS did exist, but they were few and far between, and they were usually very, very expensive. So learning to play guitar now has completely changed. One thing is true con uh, continually, though, that most guitar players are self-taught to some extent. Very few of them actually go to full-time music school to learn to play guitar. Most guitar players, to some extent, are self-taught, so we kind of all go through this. There's lots of different ways of learning, lots of different mediums. I had a guitar teacher for three years, um, but that was after I was already in a semi-pro band and I've been playing for 10 years or more at that point, and I just needed to tighten up my time and a few other uh, and a few other things. So I've used lots of different things. I, I've got a decent DVD collection of lessons now. I used to have a huge collection of VHS lessons at one point um, when VHS was still a thing. Um, for those of us of a certain vintage. Anyway, there's lots of different things. One of the things that's probably different now than back when I was learning is because there's so much, and particularly with YouTube, it can be a case of you can watch one YouTube video after the next, after the next, after the next. You can spend hours watching this stuff and thinking, wow, I'm learning all this great stuff. Actually, you don't learn anything until you get it into your fingers. So the important thing is get your fingers on the fretboard. Don't just watch videos or YouTube or whatever it is. Actually spend the time getting the, your fingers on the fretboard because that's where that muscle memory comes from. So 
find a, a thing that works for you, whether it's YouTube, books, DVDs, magazines, whatever it is, find a thing that works for you and then just stick with it and get the fingers on the fretboard because that's going to build the muscle memory. Okay, so um, with all of that, the most important thing about this instrument is that you just enjoy it. It is a challenge. It is difficult. Our fingers do hurt. We do struggle and think, are my fingers ever going to move that fast? But the thing is, keep enjoying it, keep playing, keep enjoying it. And every now and again, you get to a point where you can, where you kind of get an achievement. There's something that you couldn't do before, whether it's just being able to fluidly move chords, whether it's nailing a, a scale, whether it's nailing a guitar solo, whether it's learning a song, whether it's playing a, a song, just strumming along to a few friends, whether it's playing in your first band and playing out live. All of these achievements, you get a massive sense of satisfaction with it. The guitar is, is an instrument that's, yes, it's very challenging, it's difficult to learn, but it gives so much back because you get so much enjoyment out of it. So just keep enjoying it, keep persevering, uh, keep practicing, keep the fingers on the fretboard, and then enjoy um, those achievements, those sense of satisfaction as, you, as you're able to play and get better and get more creative on the guitar. So come back to the first question. How hard is it to learn to play guitar? How do you even answer that? It's difficult. It's tough. Most people give up. Most people don't continue playing for 35 plus years like I have. But it is incredibly rewarding if you stick to it. It's difficult. It hurts. It's physically demanding. More so than, say, playing a piano or something. But it is it is incredibly rewarding. It's an incredibly creative instrument. Allows a lot of freedom and emotion in playing. So stick with it. Keep practicing, keep the fingers on the fretboard. And tell me, let me know in the comments, what are the pieces of playing guitar that you're struggling with? What are the biggest challenge? What was the hardest thing for you to overcome that you've, that, you know, that you've now achieved? Um, please leave me some comments uh, and I'll, that can help me inform my future videos. Um, so anyway, take care. I hope you found this useful. I hope you found it encouraging to just keep practicing and know that we all struggle with these things. Okay, I hope it was useful. Take care, and I'll see you again.